God will answer those prayers. Look at this scripture right here, John 14, 13. Whatever you ask in my name, that will I do, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Okay? He'll hear us. He'll hear us. We've got a lot of stuff to do. But I want to ask you guys to commit to this. And, and, and here's what I want to do. If, if I could uh, see Joel, Taylor, would you guys come up here and help me do this? I would like for you, in fact, we'll get to more. Um, Corey, Taylor, or Corey and Sarah, can you help? Where's our young here? And I want you just to pass these out to every single person in this room. Okay, I'm going to give you something. Um, Taylor, why don't you go over on, on or uh, Joel, why don't you go over on the, the side over here Corey? Girls can take that side. Make sure everybody gets one of those sheets of paper. And uh, as, as they're bringing this to you, what I want to challenge every person in this room to do, and every member of this church, is for the next 40 days, which is today is October the 12th, 40 days from now it will be November 20th. And for that span of time, I'm going to ask you very boldly to, to change your lifestyle. And here's what I'm going to ask you to do. For some of you, this may not be a change of lifestyle. For some of you, it's going to be a total change. But here's what I want to ask you to do. Is I want you to commit to spend 10 minutes a day, at least 10 minutes a day, alone with God for the next 40 days. To carve out in your schedule, and you may be thinking, that means I, I'm going to have to change something. Yeah, you're going to have to change something. Okay? Maybe mean you need to get up 10 minutes earlier or go to bed 10 minutes later or change something, move something around. Thank you, Taylor. Thanks, guys. Awesome. Thank you. But I want to ask you to do it. And then the other thing I'm going to ask you to do, too, is that three times a week for another 10 minutes, thank you, Corey, uh, for another 10 minutes, three times a week, for you to spend with your family um, in prayer together as a family. Here's what's going to happen. If you do this, it's going to change your life. It's going to be so much more than just getting ready to, to move into a new spot and reach more people. That's big. That's huge. But this is going to be, this could very well change your life. It can get you starting to think about what is it like for me to talk and have communications with the Father like I've never done before. Okay? So, so that's going to be the thing. We're going to all be doing this. Now, so what are we going to pray about? We're going to pray as one, right? I tell you what, Brad, if you wouldn't mind going ahead and coming on up here uh, and just getting ready to, to play a little bit. There on the left-hand side, the prayer. That was the commitment. Now, the prayer is, is there's just four categories I'm going to ask you to pray for. First, my family, your family, okay? You guys, your, your family. Pray, uh, help, help me to serve, love, and care for my spouse if you have one, if not. Uh, don't worry about it. By the way, spouse, I've got to do this. We have a newlywed couple here with us this morning. Uh, Shelby and Tammy, could you guys stand up? They've been married one week. Come on, let's give them a hand. And uh, they got married last Saturday. And uh, it was really cool. It was exciting. I got to actually be a part of that, and that was fun. And so, so congratulations. Awesome. So they can, they can pray for each other. Now, if you're not married, obviously you don't, you don't pray for the spouse. But... Um, uh, pray for your children, for your parents, okay? So that's one of the things you can pray about. Also for Networks Church, pray for us to be one in living God's dream. Pray for us as a family to be, to be one. Uh, pray for a smooth transition to the new building. Pray that we would be able to raise $30,000 uh, by the end of the year to relaunch. And I shared with you guys last week that we're going to use that money for advertising, uh, to build a contingency fund, and to upgrade our equipment. Um, that's a lot of money, but I tell you what, I believe we can do that. And I believe it's, it's a goal that we can set. Um, and I also, last week I said, hey, you know, uh, for those of you that, that give tithe, uh, you know, that obviously goes into the operation of the church and, and keeping it going. But for those of you who tithe, I would like you to prayerfully consider maybe giving sacrificially over and above that um, to this uh, campaign so that we can do this. For those of you that may not um, tithe, I would like for you to consider starting to do that. Um, so anyway, that's, that's, that's for you, between you and God. Uh, and then another thing to pray for is successful relaunch uh, of the church on the 18th of January. I would love to have 200 people on the 18th. We typically have about 100 people, a little bit more sometimes. I think it's very doable with some, some the, the prayer that we're going to be doing together for us.
us thinking outward, inviting friends, the advertising, we can easily have 200 people there on Sunday, okay? Uh, another thing to pray for, the unchurched, the unsaved people of our city. Pray for divine appointments with neighbors, classmates, co-workers, etc. God, give me people to, to, to have a chance to, to love them, to share about Christ. Uh, and then for the country and the nations of the world, uh, as you guys know, you, uh, most everybody knows, is a couple weeks ago we met our goal of uh, $5,000 to plant a new church uh, in India. And we sent that money off. You guys did this, and there's going to be a new church starting in India because of what you have done. And I want us to pray for that church. We don't know exactly where it's going to be yet, but we're going to find out. And I'll be able to give you the name of the town. I'll be able to give you the name of the pastor at the time uh, when we find out. And we're going to be praying for the, that finding. Okay? Uh, then also, we've got big time in our country. We've got elections coming up. Pray for our country. Okay, the Bible tells us that we're supposed to pray for our leaders, and this would be important for us to do. Um, also, missionaries. And I put specifically the 1040 window countries. Uh, and that is the area of basically uh, North Africa all the way over to India in there. That's the least Christian part of the world, of anywhere on the planet. And, and for us to just pray, if you get a map, pick some countries out there, and just pray for Christian missionaries in those countries. And just say, God, would you, would you help them? Okay? Those are the things we can pray for. And also what I've done is for each of the weeks that we're doing this, I'm going to give your family one weekly challenge. Okay? And here's what they are. Week one, do a prayer walk of your neighborhood. A prayer walk is simply just going for a walk in your neighborhood and just praying for your neighbors as you walk through the neighborhood. It's very easy. You can, you can just you know, get the kids on, on their bikes and you walk and you don't have to make a big production of it. It's just kind of like you're having a conversation. It's like, God... Um, Pray for my neighbors. I pray for the people in these houses. I pray, God, that they would, they would know you. Um, I pray that, you know, I would be able to make friends with some of them. Um, there's some people that are saved. There's some people that are not. I pray that the unsaved ones would be drawn to you. It's that simple. That's the challenge for this week that I want you, you and your family to do. Is to just prayer walk in your neighborhood. Okay? Uh, week two, next week, have a worship service at home with your family. Uh, week three, fast one meal or activity spend that time in prayer. In other words, uh, for like lunch or, or breakfast, don't eat. Spend that time reading your Bible and praying. Or if not a meal, an activity of some type that you usually do. Like Say like you go to the gym every single day. Okay? I'm not going to go on that day uh, because I'm going to spend it in prayer. Uh, another thing that George and I were talking about is if, you know, maybe you do a lot of driving, you listen to the radio, turn the radio off and spend that time in a car praying. That could be your 10 minutes right there <laughs> for a lot of us. What you have to say to God is a lot more important than anything you're saying on the radio. I promise you. Okay? Um, that's week three. Week four, meet one neighbor, co-worker, schoolmate, who you don't currently know. <coughs> Excuse me. Week five, do a family garage sale. Sell one item of value. Cut out one monthly expense. And then donate that to the one dream. Uh, week six, invite somebody to church. Week seven, have have a neighbor that you met, a worker, over for dessert. Guys, this is all easy stuff that we can do. But I tell you what, you'll see a difference. You will see a difference. Ten minutes of prayer every day. Us praying as one, and you're not going to be by yourself. Everybody in this room is going to be doing this in their home at the same time. Okay? And just like the scripture says, whatever you ask in my name. That will I do, so that my Father may be glorified in the Son. God, we're asking for God to be glorified. We're asking for people to be reached and changed. What do you guys think? Do you want to do that? Are you cool with that? Hey, if you want to do this, could you stand to your feet right now? If you say, yeah, I can do it. Ten minutes a day, I can, I can do this. Stand up. All right, now. Yeah.